and welcome back to the insurance guru my name is Ayanda Malele thank you so much for coming back to this wonderful channel and to learn a little bit more about insurance so today's word is subrogation so listen I'm not a lawyer but I've worked in insurance so I'm going to just break it down as simply as possible so you can understand why it's stated in the terms and conditions of your policy so subrogation is really the waiving of rights from one party to another. So, you know, when you take this insurance policy, for instance, you're sort of waiving some of the rights to the insurer, where the insurer can then act on your behalf. What that means is that should you have a claim where somebody, for instance, bumped your car from behind and you now need to claim from that person, you could choose to claim from that person or you can claim from your insurer directly, pay your excess, etc. They submit and they pay your claim out and your car is fixed. What then your company, your insurance company has the power to do is then to say to the person that bumped you, their insurance company, they can go to them to say, listen, we've settled this claim and we're now demanding this because your party was liable. They can go back and forth, but they've got nice legal departments and eventually the other insurer is like, okay, yes, it was our person's fault. Here is the 100,000 rands that you guys have already paid to your person. Then they pay your insurer the money. Um, do you get all the money back? No. What happens then is the insurer will give you your portion, which is the excess that you paid. Then the rest they will keep. But that is really what subrogation is, is that they're now acting on your behalf. Which is also why you'll find in some insurance policies um, or the, the wordings themselves, they'll say things like, you should not admit fault, right? And not admitting fault is that if I have an accident with someone and I bump their car, I can't get out of my car and say, oh, so sorry, um, I'm going to pay for everything, I'm so sorry. Because what you're doing there is waiving the subrogation rights of the insurer. What you're saying is that, oh, I'm God, I'm powerful, and I'm going to pay. And listen, in the court of law, the person can go and say, listen, this person said that they're at fault and they're going to pay. And there's nothing the insurer can do about that. So now, they can't be tied to that claim. They should not, they don't want to pay those claims, they should not be attached to that claim. Why is that? Is that... When you get out of a car, don't admit fault, say, listen, our insurers are going to talk. Sometimes you might find that, even though I bumped you to the naked eye, but maybe I'm only 60% liable and you actually are 40% liable. It's my insurer's job to actually look to say, was our client truly at fault? And if at fault, by how much percentage? And then based on the 60% of liability that now is for me that caused the accident, my insurer can then only pay 60%, then the rest of the 40% can be paid by the other insurer or the person that they had an accident with. So you start understanding that, listen, when you are signing or entering this contract, you're waiving certain rights um, to your insurance company and that is subrogation and they need that to be able to fight your battles because if every person said oh I'm at fault my insurer is going to pay insurers going to be paying all these ridiculous claims that they should not be paying and at the same time they've got legal departments who go back and forth and sketch out the scene etc etc to find out who exactly was at fault and because of all these things as well, they're trying to make sure that you don't have to pay an excess. They can give that back to you and they can claim on your behalf and they can ensure that you're not, you know, misquoted or um, misinterpreted as being the person that was fully at fault when it's a percentage. Um, so, yes, that is basically the long and short of subrogation. I hope it makes sense to you. Understand that sort of like the insurer's little right to say, listen, we have a right to act on your behalf and therefore you must not, um, you know, um, accept liability because we need to be the ones to accept liability as the insurer. Long and short, but I'm so thankful that you watched this video. If you've got any more questions about this topic or any other topic related to insurance, please put it down in the comment section. Also like this video and if you could possibly be kind enough to subscribe and ask all your friends, your cousins and everybody else to watch this wonderful channel. I will see you next time.